Okay, so in today's video, we gotta talk about Bronny James, this interview with LeVar Ball and Chris Broussard. It's an interview they did seven years ago. It's resurfacing right now online. I wanna show you guys a clip because LeVar Ball was absolutely right about Bronny James because everybody and a mama right now is talking about Bronny James. I'll be showing clips a little bit later in today's video, but let's highlight this interview of LeVar Ball and Chris Broussard talking about Bronny James. Here's a clip right here. We're seeing a lot of like LeBron's son, LeBron right, Jr., right, right. who's playing great. Um, obviously, the Currys. <clears throat> You're seeing NBA players whose sons are coming up and looking like they're going to be NBA players. Well, here, here's that? the thing. you got to play the, the odds and the percentages. There have been a lot of great players, and all their sons are whack. Kareem got a son? No. Magic Jordan's got some son sons. Yeah. Uh, Jordan got sons, yeah, you know, the monsters in the NBA, they dads wasn't that good. Kobe Bryant, his dad wasn't all that. That's why he's such a monster. So you look at, you got LeBron. You got LeBron. It's going to be very hard for his kids to, because they're not going to look at him as LeBron's kids. They're going to be like, you better be just like your dad. And then after a while, that pressure starts sitting on you because it's like, wow, why I got to be like him? Why can't it just be me? And then they'd be like, oh, you're soft. You're not that good because the expectation is very, very high. My boys are good, great, but let's say I really excelled in football and made millions and millions of dollars. Do I spend that time with them now? No. I got the off season. I got to worry about myself. Now I just buy you everything. Now I get you a trainer and hope you mm -hmm. turn out to be okay. Where the fact that I wasn't all that – allows me to spend all that time and make my boys all that. <laughs> Anybody who already had that expectation, a lot of their fathers don't want to put all that weight on them because people don't look at them as, as what they were. Okay, so that's LeVar Ball talking about Bronny James. And like I said, everybody is talking about Bronny right now, man. The 55th pick in the 2024 NBA draft is getting more coverage than the top 10 picks in the 2024 NBA draft. Hey, can anybody tell me what the number one pick scored last night? Who, Zachary Reese-Ache? Yeah. Well, good. Of course, I can, but... Anybody? No. Nobody, no, no, nobody, no. How about the number two pick? Mm. Oh, you know. I don't, don't even, even know, know who, who he is. Know who they are. The number three pick? Alex R. Reese Shepard, number three pick. I got a better one for you. How about the top 15? Anybody, anybody else in the line? No, no, no. So nobody knows nothing about the top 15 picks in NBA. That is the problem here. <laughs> that they're focused on the 55th pick in the NBA draft and everybody else, the top five picks, get to go through the league like nothing happened. Ooh, nothing happened. So that's what Gilbert Arenas had to say, man. And in my opinion, man, I honestly feel like Bronny James, he shouldn't have been a 55th pick. He shouldn't have been picked at all. And this is just my humble opinion. It's, not, it's no hate or anything like that. I honestly just feel like Ronnie James should have stayed in college for at least another year or two. Ronnie's got a lot to prove. It should not be in the NBA. Because based on his resume in his first year in college, matter of fact, it might behoove him to get away from California because that's where his daddy plays. And as a result, it might come to the games, continue to bring more attention on him instead of him having the peace of mind to go someplace else where he could just work on his game, flourish without the pressure inordinately on the show. It is a damn travesty that you got people running their damn mouths, acting like it's a problem that he got his son on the team. We're now learning, based off of numerous reports that have come out the last few days, that the Golden State Warriors were contemplating grabbing Ronnie James at the 52nd overall pick, but passed on doing so in order to respect the wishes of LeBron James because they knew that the Lakers had the 55th pick and that Bron LeBron James is going to make sure that the Lakers grabbed him. Ladies and gentlemen, LeBron has earned this. Bronny has something to prove. Bronny has something to earn. He's got to put forth the work and the effort over a lengthy period of time to show that he's worthy of being in the NBA. All of that is true. But in terms of the skids being greased, pardon the phrase, so Bronny James could be on the Lakers as opposed to another NBA team, why is that a problem? Coaches do that. Executives do it. There's a whole host of folks in the, throughout the world of sports that facilitate things, that engage in a level of nepotism that we all notice because it's flagrantly obvious. Are you kidding me? This is Bronny James, the son of LeBron James. And when we think about the NBA and what it has become, 
in a $76 billion 11-year deal they recently signed with various television networks and streaming operations. I got news for you. Is that possible if it were not for LeBron James? You have any idea what LeBron James has done for the game of basketball? What LeBron James has done for the world of sports? And for him to have his son on the team with him, I got no issues with it whatsoever. I have zero issue with it whatsoever. LeBron James has earned that. Bronny James has something to prove. Fair enough. But LeBron James has earned it. How special of a moment will it be for Bron and Bronny to play together in a real NBA game? <laughs> you focus so much on how bad you think Bronny's playing when he's the 56. He's not the number one pick in the draft. You don't need to focus on the man so much like he's the number one pick or the number two pick in the draft. The minus, he was a minus 40. <laughs> through the first three preseason games. Through the game. first three preseason games, he preseason. ranks last. Cool. Who ranks second to last? That should be a story. That's the number two pick in the draft. So you want to focus on the 56 yeah, pick and the number two pick is right in front of him. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Absolutely. It's the it's it's low hanging fruit. It's easy to pick on a fucking 56 pick in the drive. Okay, so that's some of the clips that I want to show you guys in today's video. So get in the comment section down below. How do you guys feel about those clips? And also, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts and opinion about Bronny James. Do you feel like the coverage is fair? Or do you feel like the NBA and ESPN and other sports outlets, they should be covering the other top 10 draft picks in the NBA? Like Gilbert Arenas was saying, we really don't hear nothing about them. And then when you do research about them, you know, some of them are doing worse than Bronny James. Meanwhile, everybody is worried about the 55th pick. And of course, like King Martin was saying, it's just a better storyline, which obviously, right, because Bronny James' name is going to bring in the clicks and the revenue. And salute to Ticket TV as well. I've seen him talk about the topic as well. And I like what Ticket TV was saying about how LeBron James had put that pressure on his son by putting out a tweet right here. I'll pull it up for you guys. LeBron James was saying that, you know, hey, my son is better than a lot of these guys in the NBA. He just added a lot more pressure on his son for absolutely no reason at all. And I've seen people try to argue the fact that, hey, no, nah, that's his dad. That's not on Bronny. But meanwhile, when LeVar Ball was getting attention with his sons and all of the stuff LeVar Ball was saying, remember how they gave Lonzo Ball his welcome to the league moment. They used Patrick Beverly. And remember how that went down, right? I just have to set the tone, man. Yeah, I, just, I told him about the game, man, due to, you know, all the riffraff you know, his dad brings that uh, he's going to he's gonna, he's gonna get a lot of people coming at him. You know, he has to be ready for that, and I let him know after the game. But, you know, what a better way to start with Mr. 94 feet guarding than I, you know. Is, man, I'm going to feel great. I'm not done. Welcome to the little young guys at NBA. But yeah, man, that's it for today's video, guys. I would love to hear your thoughts about today's video. Get in the comment section down below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe for more Sub Talk videos. Catch you guys on the next one. And we out, guys. Peace.